I think that shopping for your fantasy self is one of the most toxic things that you can do to your wardrobe. So if you find yourself shopping for your fantasy self more often than you would like, or maybe you're not even sure if you are and you just wanna gather some more information on what it is and how to fix it, this video is exactly what you need. Now, before we get into all the information I have about shopping for your fantasy self, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more style content, as well as content on how to be a more responsible shopper. Give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to check out my brand new style membership over at Feeling Good Style Club. Now with this membership, you get all of these goodies right here. And the best part is you get to connect with other like-minded individuals who love style as well. So make sure you check it out. Everything will be linked in the description that you need. And let's just get right into it. So in this video, we're gonna be running through a couple of different things. We're first gonna talk about what it means to shop for your fantasy self. We're gonna move into why people actually shop for their fantasy selves. We're gonna run through why it's toxic, why it's not good for your closet and your wallet and your wardrobe as a whole. And then I'll be giving you tips on how to avoid shopping for your fantasy self, as well as how to scratch that itch when you feel like you want something new, fun and exciting but you don't wanna to commit to something that you probably won't wear more than once or twice or even ever. So first let's get into what it actually means to shop for your fantasy self. It's when you shop for a romanticized version of yourself rather than what's real in this very moment right now. Shopping for your fantasy self helps you tap into this part of you that you desperately want to exist. And the feeling of buying something that helps fit that narrative just makes it feel even more real. Now this could mean shopping for a future fantasy version of yourself, which I feel like is the most common way that people shop for their fantasy selves, but it also means shopping for a past fantasy version of yourself. Like we are all different people and we all evolve so much that sometimes we look back at past versions of ourselves and we think like, oh, I wish my body still looked like that. I wish my lifestyle still was like that. I wish my hobbies were the same. So it definitely goes both ways into the future as well as the past. And I wanna make it clear that there's nothing wrong with wanting to work towards a fantasy version of yourself, but the stepping stones to get there do not consist of buying clothes that don't work for you in this moment. Now let's get into why people like to shop for their fantasy selves. At the end of the day, when you're shopping for a romanticized version of yourself, it's because it satisfies this desire for self-improvement and transformation. When you purchase something that aligns with this idolized version of you that does not exist, it definitely gives you a temporary sense of fulfillment and excitement. This is the true definition of aspiration, right? Like you are aspiring to be someone, so you're making aspirational purchases. It creates this momentary illusion of taking a step towards the person you wanna be, whether it's a more fit person, a more successful person, a more social person, like whatever the case may be, when you buy something for your fantasy self, it's giving you essentially like a false sense of reality. I do think there is one major culprit out there that has contributed significantly to why people actually shop for their fantasy selves and then end up disappointed when they don't wear the items or the items don't fit correctly or whatever the case may be. And that is social media. <laughs> Specifically, I'm talking about influencers and obviously brands. Now I've worked in the fashion industry my entire career. I worked in brand strategy for a majority of it. So a lot of what I was doing was working behind the scenes with brands to conceptualize campaigns that would help sell a dream essentially. So I'm very well equipped to understand kind of the formula that goes into this whole idea of encouraging people to shop for their fantasy selves. My degree is also in marketing. This is simply just marketing. Like this is just how marketing works and it's up to us to recognize what's realistic and what is not. Now influencers curate aspirational content by creating a narrative that certain products are absolutely essential in order to achieve a certain lifestyle or a certain identity. And brands do the same by really capitalizing on the idea that if you buy this one product, it will help lead you to a more fulfilling lifestyle. 
And I find it really interesting because at the end of the day, this is purely about comparison. You are comparing yourself to influencers you see, and you're also comparing yourself to campaigns that you see brands advertising. But obviously these are not realistic. Like I don't need to tell you this at this point. I'm sure you get it. These lifestyles are extremely curated and extremely filtered to highlight the best moments which are just a distorted sense of reality. Now this ultimately leads to unrealistic expectations from people like you and I, who may feel like buying certain products are going to just effortlessly transform our lives. So now I wanna talk about why it's actually toxic to shop for your fantasy self, because I know that some people might be like, well, what's wrong with wanting to strive to a better version of yourself? Like. I completely get it. One of the biggest reasons why it is toxic is because of the psychological effects that it has. I am not a licensed mental health professional. What I'm about to tell you is just my observations, my opinions from my own experience. When you shop for an idolized version of yourself, you are making a disconnect between who you are and who you think you should be. And really why this sucks so much is because you are constantly comparing your real self to an unrealistic standard. Every time you see those unused clothes in your closet, it's just a reminder of this version of you that you want to be, but you just aren't. And I find that over time, this gap between your real self and your fantasy self can kind of chip away at your confidence. It can kind of erode it a little bit and it can make you feel like you're constantly falling short. Like we all know the guilt of having clothes in our closet that go untouched. And I find that a lot of these pieces are because we were shopping for a version of ourselves that does not exist. And it sucks, okay? It sucks. It is not a good feeling. Bad vibes in this section of the video, sorry about it, but I do feel like it's really important to kind of understand the why behind shopping for your fantasy self and ultimately like why it's toxic. Shopping for your fantasy self creates temporary fulfillment, ultimately followed by disappointment. Now, one of the other reasons why shopping for your fantasy self is so toxic comes down to your physical closet. Now, when we're looking at it from a practical standpoint instead of an emotional standpoint, when you shop for your fantasy self, it can lead to a very cluttered and disorganized closet. When you're purchasing clothes that don't suit your current lifestyle, they are taking up space, they're collecting dust, and they're contributing to that guilt and regret that we feel. And it can make getting dressed a really frustrating experience. Like you see something in your closet, you know it's not right for today, you know it's not gonna be right for tomorrow or pretty much ever, and you're like, why did I buy it? Why did I spend my money on it? Like, it sucks. I think I've said that a lot this video. It sucks. <laughs> I also find that this leads to that notion where you're like, I have so much clothes in my closet, but I have nothing to wear. Why do you think you have nothing to wear? Because a lot of the clothes aren't fitting in your current lifestyle. Now, if you are in need for a closet detox, I have a seven day closet detox course that is a part of my membership. So make sure you check that out in the description box down below if you are looking for a little bit of a closet refresh. And the last reason and probably the biggest reason why it's so toxic is because of the financial strain that it can have on your wallet. When you're constantly buying items for a version of you that does not exist, you are spending money that you ultimately don't need to spend or maybe you don't even have the money to spend it depending on your situation. And I also find that shopping for your fantasy self can lead to impulse purchases you think it's gonna give you this instant satisfaction and it does sometimes, but that slowly withers away over a few minutes, few hours, a few days when you realize that the item's not for you. But because we're chasing that dopamine so much, it feels good to impulse buy, it just does. And when you're caught up in this idea that this item is gonna bring you this new and improved version of yourself, it feels like it's easier to justify unnecessary purchases. Now I have an entire video all about eight questions to ask yourself before impulse buying. So I will link that above here. Check that out if you feel like you have some impulse buying tendencies and just check it out in general if you feel like you're someone who shops for their fantasy self a little bit too much, it will definitely help you out. Now let's get into my tips on how to avoid shopping for your fantasy self. 
My first tip is all about self-reflection. Before you decide to buy something, it's really important to take a step back and think about how it is going to perform in your life and in your closet. So the question that I like to ask myself before buying pretty much anything is, can I see myself wearing this tomorrow? Can I see myself wearing it this week? If you can't see yourself wearing it in the immediate future, it's probably a no. My next tip is to shift your mindset. So instead of focusing on buying items that are only for your fantasy self, I want you to think about specific actions that you can take to be the person that you want to be. There is nothing wrong with wanting to grow as a person and shift your lifestyle as long as it's attainable and realistic. I find that visualizing your goals and taking actionable steps towards them that don't involve buying clothes or anything else that just doesn't fit into your life right now is almost like planting seeds and then watching the flowers grow. It's all about making long lasting choices about the life that you want to live rather than just dressing it up with things that aren't gonna have a lasting impact. I recommend making a vision board. It is one of the best ways to put your goals down visually in front of you and refer to it whenever you need a little bit of a pick me up. Now my next tip is to rent your clothes. Now I talk about this all the time because I'm a big renter, especially from Newly. It is my favorite place to rent clothes. Like I love it. So when you do feel like you want to test a new aesthetic or maybe you have an event coming up that is never going to happen again or happens once in a blue moon kind of thing and you don't have anything in your closet to test it out or to wear it to the event or do whatever, renting your clothes is a really great way to try it out. Now I'm gonna give you guys an example. I went to a music festival recently. It was my first music festival. And instead of going out and buying a bunch of clothes that I was going to wear one time at the music festival and never again, because let's be honest, like I'm probably not gonna go to another festival anytime soon. I rented my clothes and I was able to wear really fun, cute outfits that gave me that little fix of this festival fantasy version of myself that is quite unrealistic. Like, yes, I went, but for me to drop a ton of money on items that are just going to take space in my wardrobe, not a great idea. That's why I love renting so much. So if you do find yourself kind of hopping into different scenarios that either are contributing to this fantasy version of yourself or not, renting your clothes is such a great idea to just tap into some more fun pieces and experiment. And my last tip is to get off of social media. Now, I know that this is asking a lot. I know that a lot of people are probably gonna be like, no, thank you, that's fine. But I do think that social media is one of the biggest culprits to encouraging us to shop for our fantasy selves. Now I deleted Instagram and TikTok a few years ago and trust me when I say I have not looked back. And you know what? I have found that it has really shifted the relationship that I have with my clothes and with my closet because I'm no longer constantly tempted to buy things. And I'm also no longer comparing myself to these aspirational figures that I follow. Now, obviously I'm on YouTube, but I pretty much only watch other YouTubers that fall within the same realm as me when it comes to slow fashion, responsible shopping, couple things here and there. But I do think that maybe you could either take a break from social media if you don't want to delete it altogether, or maybe you could just mute or unfollow some people who are really tempting to you and just see how it shifts your buying behaviors. See how it shifts your mind when it comes to the impulses you have to buy certain things. Again, I know it's a lot to ask, but it is such a huge help. And if you feel like you are really struggling with shopping for your fantasy self, I think it would do you some good. All right, you guys, that is the end of the video. Do me a favor and leave a comment down below if you're somebody who also shops for their fantasy self or leave any piece of advice that you may have for others when it comes to shopping for your fantasy self. I would love to hear about it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I am so appreciative of your support and I will see you guys next time. Bye.